All right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus. This is episode 147, and in this episode, we will talk about when to take profits on options. You see, options trading can be great. Uh, it's a great way to make money, but it's important to know when you should take profits. So today I want to show you my formula, how to calculate when to take profits, and we will answer the question, does it make sense to let options expire or should you take profits early? Anyhow, that's it for today, so let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for Systematic, Repeatable, and Consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the markets. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then click on like right now and let's get started. All right, episode 147. And today we talk about when to take profits when trading options. <laughs> okay, because you see options tradings is really fascinating and it's a great way to make money. And I think it is very important to know when to take profits, especially if you like trading the wheel as I do and you like selling options. Because now the question is, how do you know when to take profits? Is there a formula for it? So in this video, I'll share some guidelines for how and when you should take your profit on an option trade. And we will answer the question, should you let options expire or take profits early. And I will show you some very specific example of two trades that I've going on right now. One of them, I took profits today and the other one I'm still holding on and I will show you exactly why. So let's jump over to the handy dandy notepad here. And uh, first of all, let's talk about how to calculate profits on options. And uh, so, in order to address this question, first of all, there are two types of uh, option traders. The one type of option trader that are buying options and the other, which I feel is very, very lucrative, and this is what I've been doing uh, a long time, is selling options and receiving premium. <clears throat> so. I want to actually talk about selling options and receiving premium because this is, as I said, what I've been focusing recently uh, with trading the wheel. And uh, if you switch over here to my account, then you see that year to date thus far on this account, I've made more than $54,000 uh, selling premium on options. And I want to show you exactly how to do this. So when selling options, you're receiving premium and uh, for me, the most important metric here, uh, let's just write it down, the most important metric, and again, this is for selling options, is the so-called premium per day. And I'm abbreviating it into PPD. And uh, let me take, give you two very specific examples. And the first example that I wanna give you is Mara. So this is a trade that I put on, and uh, let me show you exactly what I did here with uh, with Mara. Uh, actually, we don't need to go to the activity. We just want to show the transactions and I want to go to Mara over the last 30 days. There we go. So uh, let me actually bring up here the handy dandy iPad so that you see exactly of what my plan was here with Mara. <clears throat> so as you can see, with Mara, I sold puts at a strike price of 20. And for this, I received premium of uh, 28 cents per option that I sold. Now options come in 100 packs. So this means that per option I made $28. Now, in this specific example, I sold 50 options. So this means that uh, I'm receiving premium of $1,000. $400. Now let's go back here into my account and you see that I put this trade on on March 10th. So um, let's actually go back here, example Mara. So on March 10th, I sold uh, 50 put options uh, that expire 
319 and I sold them for uh, 28 cents. <clears throat> so this means that uh, I have been receiving uh, 50 times 28 is $1,400. Now, if you think about it, if I sold them <clears throat> on March 10th and they're expiring <clears throat> on March 19th, oh, need to have a <clears throat> quick sip of water here. Yeah, today I have water in this mug, usually coffee. Today I decided to go with some water, not to be overhyped because the Fed has made an exciting announcement and the markets are really exact, uh, acting favorably. So uh, anyhow, we'll talk about this later if you want to. So this means here that I make $1,400 in nine days. And if you're using our handy dandy calculator, we can actually calculate how much premium we are making per day. So this is 155.55. So let's just say it is $156 per day. Now this includes weekends because you see March 10th was uh, what last Wednesday I did this. And uh, so here for nine days, this would include weekends and we would make $156 per day. <clears throat> so here is one of the things that I like to do. So <clears throat> my rule is I'm buying <clears throat> back the option when I can get 90% of the maximum profits. And there's an exception to the rule, but first let me tell you what that means. So again, I sold them for $28 uh, for 28 cents. So here um, I need to round a little bit. The idea is to buy back the option at uh, three cents. And this is exactly what I did today. And today is March 17th. So we own, we have another, what, 17, 18, 19, three days left. So three days, depending on how you calculate it, right? I mean, could be two days, could be three days uh, to expiration. So, <clears throat> Today, if you're looking in the account here, you see that I bought back 42 and 5 and 3, so a total of 50 contracts at 3 cents. And by doing so is uh, what I happened, uh, what happened is that I made 25 cents in profits on Mara. Now, this is where, again, we're looking at uh, 50 contracts times $25, so this is $1,250. And if we now see uh, that today on March 17th, I did it. So over seven days, I did the following. Let's uh, just use our handy dandy calculator. So 1,250 divided by seven days. So as you can see right now, over the past seven days, I made uh, 178 57 So let's just round to $179 per day. As you can see, $179 is bigger than the $156 that I planned per day. Now, um, let, let's think about it. If I would keep Mara right now, if I would keep this option until expiration, okay, if I kept the Mara put option until expiration, what would happen? I would make an additional, an additional, uh, what is it? $150, $150 in three days. Now, if you calculate this, this means that now uh, my premium per day is only $50 per day. And you see, this doesn't make sense to me because this year is actually bad. That's why I'm marking it this in red, right? Because my plan was to make $156 per day. I was able to make $197, uh, $179 per day. And if I would hold on to this trade and let it expire as worthless, so this is right here, um, and let it expire uh, worthless, 
right? This is what would happen. I would make an additional $150 in three days and the premium per day is only $50 per day. That does not make sense to me at all. By the way, if you're interested in these notes, if you would like to get a copy of the notes, I'll let you know towards the end of the video how you can get a copy of the notes. I'll be happy to send it to you if you want to. Okay, so this is why here in Mara, it made sense, right? It made sense to buy back, oops, there we go, to buy back the put option because by doing so, what does it do? It frees up uh, buying power. And when I'm freeing up buying power, right, it means that now I can sell more puts and the idea here is that I'm selling more puts and make more money on the new puts uh, then I would make holding on to Mara. This makes sense? Okay, so, so let me ask you before I show you the other example, is, is this making sense thus far? Because again, we're talking about how to, cal profit, how to calculate profit on options and when you should take uh, uh, profits and uh, at least in my experience, this is what I'm doing here. If this is making sense and you're enjoying this, do me a favor and click on like really quick because this way I see when the likes are jumping up. I can see this. I see that these videos are helpful for you. And th that's my purpose on this channel. Show you real examples, real trading, give you tips and tricks that you can apply in your trading right away. <clears throat> okay. And uh, I believe that then is spelled with an A. So let me show you another example. So here's another example. And the other example that I have right now is DKS. So um, let's actually talk about DKS and what happened there. So um, I want to show it to you, first of all, on the handy dandy iPad so that you see of what happened. So DKS, as you can see, I sold the 66 strike. So I sold, this is a put with a 66 strike. Let me just uh, quickly jump over to the account to see exactly what we did here. And uh, coincidentally, this is a trade that I also put on on March uh, 10th, as you can see. So we're writing it down here in just a moment, uh, but I sold 15 of them and I received $75 in premium. So this means using our handy dandy calculator, where did it go? Uh, 15 times 75. So here, uh, this is $1,125. Okay, so let's do the math right now and see if it makes sense to close this trade today or if we should keep it. So again, we're using a very similar logic here. So we sold uh, the 66 put uh, and we are received at, uh, and this happened, what happened here on uh, March 10th, again. So 66 port expiring uh, March 19th. And uh, we received uh, 75 cents for it at 75 cents. There we go. So uh, let's just calculate it. So 66, no, wait, uh, we sold the 66 put, but we only sold 15 times the 66. So this is uh, makes 15 options times $75 and we just calculated it, it's $1,125. And again, we are dividing this by nine days to get to our premium per day. And where is our handy dandy calculator? 1125 by nine days. So this means that our premium per day is $125 per day. Okay, cool. So I'll mark this in green and then we see where we are right now. So uh, let's just see. Yeah, I didn't want to make this green. There we go. So right now, on March 17th, let's see how much uh, DKS is still worth. So let's see uh, right now. DKS, uh, so we are actually trading uh, 5 over 10 cents. Um, so that is the bid ask here. And that's really interesting because I want to buy it back at seven cents. 
But let's say right now, if I would place an order right now, I could buy it back at 10 cents. So right now, March 10, 10th, I could, and this is now the question, should I do it? I could buy it back for 10 cents. If I did this, I would make a 75 minus 10 cents. So this means $65, uh, 64, uh, 65 cents times 15. So my total would be here. Let's use the handy dandy calculator. And uh, this were 65 times 15. So right now I would make $900. And $75. Now we are dividing this by seven days and uh, we see what happens so that we get to our premium per day. So 975 divided by seven and you see, yeah, it's already better. It's $139. So uh, we are making right now $139 per day. So I, if I really wanted to and if I needed to fry, uh, free up some buying power, I could do this. Uh, but let's see what happens if we hold this for a few more days. So if we hold um, DKS until expiration, we can make an, an additional, there we go, an additional. That is difficult if you put these two words together, isn't it? Well, at least it is for me. But hey, I'm a foreigner. For you, it might be super easy. Uh, anyhow, so an additional 10 times uh, 15. So we can make an additional $150. Now, looking at this here, it might actually make sense to close it out. So because $150 over the next three days do not make a lot of sense because this brings down by three days our premium per day to $50. And this is very similar here. So I should probably close this one out uh, because right now holding it, um, so holding it makes us $50 per day. But here's the deal, here's the deal. Uh, let's take a look at this. And it requires $16,212 in buying power. Yeah, and it ties up, what did I say, 16,000, around 16,000, 16,212 in buying power, right? So it would make sense to do it. Now, here's the deal. When I looked at the option earlier, so earlier today, because the markets jumped just up like crazy. Let, let me just show it to you here on the, on the chart. You, you got to see it of what happened here a few minutes ago. I'm going back to a five minute chart. And as you can see here on the five minute chart, DKS suddenly jumped from 78 to uh, what, almost 79. So by doing this this year, this is a 10% jump, right? So a 10% jump just happened over the past, uh, what, around 30 to 45 minutes. And when I looked at it this morning, you see this were actually, this is where we opened this morning. So this year, is the open and first we went down and then we went a little bit up and then we were hovering right there uh, where we opened. So earlier this morning, when I was looking at it earlier this morning, uh, the DKS put was trading at uh, 25 cents. So the question is earlier this morning, would it have made sense to close it? And again, this were uh, if I hold it, I would make, and this is why now we're looking at uh, uh, at what twenty five an additional. So let's do it the the other way around. So let's do this actually. The math that we did earlier, just right now, using the example from earlier. So this was earlier, not right now. Earlier today, on March seventeenth, I could have bought it back for 25 cents. So that wouldn't have made sense, right? Because then if I'm buying it back for 25 cents, I would only make $50. So this here, uh, 50 cents, this is then uh, uh, $750 in seven days. And if you use our handy dandy calculator, 750 by seven days, 
this is $107 premium per day. And as you can see, the $107 premium per day is less than what I expected. And uh, if I would hold OTKS to expiration, we can make an additional 25 cents, $25 times 15. And that is how much? Um, 25 times 15, it's $375. Now, if you take the $375 in three days, that would be $125 premium per day. So when I'm getting $125 premium per day, this is when uh, it does not make sense to sell it just yet. Okay. So this is the, the important thing because uh, the, the question always is, do you take profits early? And uh, let's talk about this here. Okay. So should you take profits early or hold until expiration. And uh, here's my formula for this. So I want to give you a very specific formula that you can use if you want to. Okay. So if the current realized premium is a uh, premium per day, PPD is larger than the plant PPD, this means sell, okay, not, not sell, uh, close. Close it out early. And if the remaining premium per day is smaller than the plant premium per day, close it, okay? Only if the current realized premium per day is smaller than the plant PPD. In this case, and again, PPD is premium per day. In this case, hold it. Okay. So uh, this here, this is actually just this above here expressed in a different way. Okay. And uh, so you can also express it here uh, where you say if the remaining premium per day, there we go is larger than the planned PPD. In this case, you want to hold it. So this is where today I wanted to show you my formula for when to take profits on options, especially when you are an options seller and you see selling options and receiving premium. This is what we do with the wheel strategy. And the most important metric here is the premium per day. I'm going to mark this in purple. Why not? So, and this is where using the PPD, the premium per day, you can actually get down to a formula of when exactly you should buy or sell, or you can do an approximation as I do it. And this is where I close a trade. And this is where uh, it's a, just a good rule of thumb if you don't want to do all these calculations. So the rule of thumb is I close a trade when I can realize 90% of the maximum profits. Good. Cool. Oops. Geez, that's not what I wanted to do when I uh, can realize. There we go. 90% of the max profits. Okay. Uh, let me ask you, is, is this helpful thus far? Uh, because if it is, do me a favor and click on like really quick. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, subscribe to this channel, hit the little notification bell because this way you get notified whenever I release a new video. So let's take a look at, uh, at your questions here, because I appreciate you being live here. And if you're watching the recording, leave a comment with a question. So, um, I just want to go through this and uh, Patty says happy St. Patty's Day. Yes, it is your day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. If uh, you are Irish or part of you is Irish or you just like to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody here. Okay, good. So um, 
Let's see, Tron is asking, if I use the PowerX strategy to purchase stocks, does it make sense to sell the covered calls on those shares while waiting for profits or is it too risky? Actually, my head coach Mark Hodge and I discussed it yesterday because we wanted to see if this is possible. And we ran through multiple scenarios and it is not possible. So the short answer, Tron, no, don't do this. A uh, longer answer is probably something that I address in one of the upcoming uh, in one of the upcoming Coffee with Marcus videos, if you want to. Okay, cool. Um, so let's see, I've just to say, is it good to use OCO orders with the PowerX optimizer? Well, it, again, it, it depends, right? This is where you want to use OCO orders mainly when you are trading stocks. When trading stocks, OCO orders are good. When trading options, I do not recommend using OCO orders and here's why. Options sometimes can have a pretty wide bid ask spread. Just want to see if I if I find one uh, that has. I, I think uh, when I looked on Mara earlier, it had a pretty wide bid ask spread. And if you don't know what a bid ask spread is, please, I did a video on this. I'll link to it in the description. And this is where I looked at it. Now, I don't find an example here uh, fairly quickly. But you see, when you have a large bid ask spread, this is when it does not make sense to use the OCO orders, one cancels another. In this case, I would always work with limit orders here. But great question. Great question. Okay, good, good, good. So, um, all right, Ed is asking, greetings from Norwich, UK. Hey, how are you? Welcome. I've been watching your channel for a few months now, find it really useful, learned a lot. Have you got anywhere with your property investments? Oh, I have gone a lot. You know what? Um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in learning more on how I invest in real estate, because if so, I'm doing one of the upcoming uh, Coffee with Marcus to show you exactly what I'm doing. I, I'll show you the houses that I bought, why I bought them. I show you how I'm buying now apartment complexes. And I can tell you if you want to about the most recent transaction that I did where I sold an apartment complex and um, all the experience and I can give you real numbers as always, because as you know, this channel is about real trading, real profits. And uh, so if we want to apply this to real estate, if you're interested in this, I'll be happy to share this with you. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you want to do or if you just want to keep talking about trading. Either way is fine. Good, good, good. OK. So um, David says uh, selling put on TDA ties up a lot of funds in tier two. Yeah, I'm, I'm not selling anything on TDA. So that's not what I like I like to do. And yeah, Jeff uh, Allen says the Fed has shot steroids in the afternoon into the markets. It seems this way. I mean, I, when I looked at it earlier, it seems that uh, now we are up, but it seems that also right now coming down a little bit. Yeah, so looking at a at a five minute chart here. So this is a five minute chart of the Nasdaq. And if you're quickly looking at it of what happened here this afternoon. So right here, this is when we had the FOMC statement and the markets shot up and they're pulling back a little bit right now. Uh, we have another two minutes in trading left right now. So but it seems that all three major indices will finish in the green. So the Dow Jones right now up uh, 0 0.6, uh, S&P uh, up 0.24. We'll, we'll see where we stand at the end of the day. I believe the the Nasdaq might have. No, it's still positive. So we're all it's all good. So good, good, good. Anyhow. Yeah, so this is good. Um, Timothy wants to know what was his strike price on Mara? Twenty dollars. Yep, that is correct. It was twenty dollars. Absolutely. OK. So uh, Ron and Liz says uh, Mark is on 50 units. It would cost me sixty dollars to close the trade. So I need to take this into account. Ron, I have something for you. Um, I believe that next week I will reveal uh, a major partnership that uh, we did with the brokerage that will save you a metric shit ton in commissions. And I'm not taking this lightly uh, because if, if I'm looking at my account right now, I can just tell you. Uh, so let me switch over here. Look at how much in commissions I paid just thus far. And thus far I have paid uh, $451 in commissions. And, and I mean, I, I made $54,000, so not a big deal, not a big deal. But since you brought it up, so uh, we are getting ready to introduce something where I would have saved 90% 
on commissions. More than 90%. I would have paid a fraction of this. So um, it's, a, it's a great question. And Ron, I have something for you really, really soon. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that announcement. Okay, um, Bob is saying, what is your opinion of a poor man's covered call in a Roth IRA account? I would say trade the wheel. I, I, did, a, I did a video on the poor man's covered call. I'll link to it in the description and you can uh, search for it on this channel here. So it's okay, it makes you money, but I believe by trading the wheel strategy, you can make even more money. So Bob, I'll also link to it in the description. I have a playlist for the wheel where I'm explaining this strategy in detail. It's all for free here on this channel here. Okay. So Harshit says, if I'm making 20 to 30% of my premium in the first two to three days, um, I get out of the trade and sell a new put. Is it a good strategy? Again, the key is the premium per day. If you can replace it with another trade where you make more premium per day, yes, absolutely, that is a good strategy. You see, I had trades where in one day, in one day, I sh it shot up and I made 70% of my max profits. In this case, right? makes sense to close it out because right now, if you hold it until expiration, you only make 30 additional 30% uh, yeah, of the max profits. Probably doesn't make sense. Okay. So uh, Matisse says closing one put on Tesla, Tesla costs $200. Doesn't make sense. Again, stay tuned. I have something super exciting for you. You are going to love it. I promise. I promise. Okay. Good. Um, so Michael says, maybe this question is too extensive. Uh, why not use trailing stops than static stops? Uh, that way, once the stock price goes up, if it turns around, you can keep the gains you made. That is actually an excellent question, Michael. And I did a video on this. Uh, it's called taking profits or taking profit strategy. I'll link to it in the description. And uh, again, it's a taking profits video of why I believe that profit targets make more sense than trailing stops. And I'm proving it to you in that video. Okay, so take a look at this. Good, good, good. All right. What else? That is so good to see you here. And uh, Tom says, yeah, early exits have been very kind for me. More trades per week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Good. What other questions do we have here? Um, so I'd like to BTC at 90% of CSPs. This is Andy, way too cryptic for me. I, you already lost me at uh, BTC is Bitcoin at 90% of call spread puts. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, you probably know what you're doing. So good for you. You see, this is the deal. Um, sometimes people say, well, with your trading strategy, this and this. And, uh, you know, I never criticize other people's trading strategy because when it comes to trading, there's only two things that are important. Are you making money or are you losing money? If you are making money, why would I criticize what you're doing? I mean, obviously you're doing something right because 90% of traders lose 90% of their money in the first 90 days. Did you know that? It's a statistic. Don't know if it is true. I read it somewhere, uh, but it sounds about right because I hear that many traders are losing money. So uh, this is where um, Andy, if this works for you, good for you, right? So keep doing it and I keep doing what I'm doing because it works really, really well for me. Okay, good. So Rifat says, uh, thank you so much for your videos. Wondering how selling puts out of the money works. How do you consider it risky? No, this is what I'm doing all the time, Rifat. So if you are new to this channel, uh, because I don't think that I've seen your name before, so you might be new to the channel. If you, if you are new to the channel, and just let me know in the comments or leave a comment right now in the live chat here and say new to this channel. I'm just curious. Um, I'll link to a playlist on the wheel strategy. I do believe that uh, if executed correctly, it can be very, very profitable. So uh, this is why make sure that you understand this strategy first before you commit real money with trading. But I'll link to it in the description here. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, JR, follow the plan. Don't sell early. Yes, as you know, I have a mug that says follow the plan and I have it on my desk so that I'm always being reminded together with another mug that I have that says trade what you see, not what you think. So if you would like to have a mug like this, uh, we have a store. It's store.rockwelltrading.com. You can get it. It's like $9 or something like this. Mm. 
It's a really cool mug and helps you to stay focused. It's about these what subliminal messages, right? Uh, stuff that uh, gets into your brain. I mean, I'm looking at it all day long. And if I'm looking at it all day long, what do you think my brain does? It adapts this, follow your plan. And uh, it's super helpful. At least it has been for me. Okay, good, good, good. And um, yeah, so this would be for selling puts. What's the plan on calls uh, that are 90%? Same deal, same deal here. Uh, you see, this is why I said it earlier. Uh, when it comes to this here, you see, as long as you're selling options, and it does matter. This is why I didn't say selling puts. This is why I said selling options. It's about premium per day. So you're applying the exact same principle to selling calls. Okay, cool. All right. So um, Caleb says, is there a way to do something like close if 80% on Monday, 85% on Tuesday, 90% on Wednesday? Yes, you can actually, uh, Caleb, it's, it's a great question. You can actually just calculate the premium per day and uh, you can calculate the realized premium per day and the remaining premium per day. And once the realized premium per day is larger than the remaining premium per day, you can get out of this. So you could do this uh, for me personally. I'm a little bit lazy. So this is why I like the rule of thumb that I gave you here uh, at the end. So this is pretty much uh, the, the lazy man's way to trade, um, which is me. So lazy man's or woman's way to trade. Okay. This is where I'm just using the 90% of the maximum profits. And then I set it and forget it. But yeah, Caleb, you can always make it more complicated. Absolutely. All right, good. So our Coca finally able to catch it live. That is great. Okay. Jayani, learning options trading from here. So glad that this is helpful. Make sure that you share this video with others so that they can also benefit from these videos. So share it on Twitter, on Reddit, on Facebook, uh, I mean, by email, uh, send it as a text message, well, whatever. Yeah, share, share it with others if you find these helpful. And always click the like button. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, um, so Michelle says such a timely topic. Okay, I'm great that it, it helps you. Uh, so Eric says, uh, do you trade with an, an LLC for tax purposes? Yes, I do, because for me, it does make sense because I live in Texas and Texas is a state that is very business friendly. I mean, very low franchise taxes, right? I mean, no state income tax. So I do it. It does. It might not make sense for you, depending on what state you're in and how your overall income is structured. It might or might not make sense for you. I'm actually planning to uh, bring somebody onto the show, uh, a CPA who is an expert interviewing him so that I can give you that information. Okay. So Frank says, what do you do if it never gets to 90%? Well, at some point it will expire worthless, right? At some point you're either getting assigned or it expires worthless. When it expires worthless, it gets to 100%, right? So you will be good here. You will be good. Okay, good. Um, Civil Mass, do you have an update on what you're currently doing with right? Same thing that I did on Monday. So in the previous video, I talked about the right trade and I said that I will wait until earnings are released today. So today earnings are being released, but I believe that there's a second important event within the next eight to 10 days, they will present a new prototype. So this is where right now I'm sitting on my hands and I explained my exact plan in the previous video. I'll link to it in the description so that you see exactly what my plan is and what I'm doing. And I very clearly said, I will wait until earnings are out of the way. All right, cool. So uh, Mike says, uh, can't figure out how to buy the PowerX calculator on the Rockwell side. You know what? Uh, just call or text the office. Uh, so you can call. It's an Austin phone number, 512-337-1885. Or if you want, if you're in the US, you can also just text this number or send an email to support at rockwelltrading.com and they'll be happy to help you. Uh, so I do believe that right now we do have a special for the software. So if you're interested in the PowerX Optimizer, the software that I personally use every single day to find these trades that have yielded, you see every single trade thus far has been a profitable trade. And all of these trades have been taken from the software, the PowerX Optimizer, because that's the software that I use every single day to find the best stocks and options to trade. Anyhow, so yeah, uh, call or text the office, they can help you with this. Cool, okay. 
So, um, Michael says, since we only can hit like once, is there a way to create polls? So we can show our support for various topics. That is an excellent idea, Michael. I will look into this. I'm pretty sure that there is a way. So um, I'll look into this. Stay tuned. I might have something for you in the next Coffee with Marcus. Okay. Good. Um, so how do you calculate, uh, Geo is asking, uh, the rate of return? You mentioned that you want at least 30%. Is it based on premium uh, money at risk? No. So here, yeah, let me show you because this is super important. It's a great, great, great question. So let me actually go back here to the desktop and let's talk about uh, the, the annualized. Okay. So we want to talk about the annualized, annualized. All right. So in order to do this, you see, we're taking the premium per day. And since I said I'm holding it over the weekends anyhow, so we're taking the premium per day and taking it by 360 days. So let, just, uh, let me just show you how to calculate it. So in this example here, it would be 139 times 360 days. And this is where we bring out again our handy dandy calculator. And the good news is, you see, you can use a calculator with a divided by, uh, multiply, subtract, and add. And that's all we need for this. So this times 139. So this would be uh, $50,040. And now the question is, okay, how much money did we need to invest in here? So what is our buying power needed? So we are basically taking this uh, 50,000, 50,000, $40 and divide it by the buying power uh, that is needed to take this trade. So let's see, this was a 66 put and I sold 15 of them. So uh, this means that each for each put, I have to put up 600, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, $660. So this is here, uh, 6,600. Uh, 6, sorry, math on the fly, never a good idea. So $6,600 and I'm taking this times 15 contracts. So the buying power needed for this particular trade would be 6,600 times 15. So that's 99,000. So $99,000 is the buying power needed. And now all I need to do is uh, divide the 50,040, 50,040 divided by 99. There we go. So this actually was a trade that would have made 50.5% annualized. Okay. So this is how you get to the, it, it's a great question. I hope that helps, but the annualized RI, this is how you calculate it. You take the PPD times 360 days and you divide this by the buying power. Let's actually make this really nice. So this is by buying power. Uh, and then we use this here. Um, so this is 50,400 uh, by divided by the buying power needed, which is, so we divide this by 6,600 times 15, right? Uh, which is 99,000. And this gives us the 55% annualized. Great question. Great question. Thanks, uh, Gio, for asking. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Edgar says, I put a GTC right after entering for 90%. And if it doesn't happen early, I cancel to close to expiration. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, good. So let's see. Um, Alex wants to hear more about real estate. Uh, Nathan wants to hear more. Zia wants to know more. Inga wants to know more. Okay, it seems that you're interested. So I will do a, a dedicated um, coffee with Marcus for investing in real estate of what exactly I do there. Okay, good. So Charles asking, what about a Rockwell real estate channel? I would tune in. <sighs> You see, for me, real estate investing, it's more long term investing. Uh, it's something where maybe I, I work on this for one hour per month, if that. Um, recently, I've been working more on this because I've been selling an apartment complex. So I've been working on this maybe for an hour a day for a total of 10 days. But, but you see, this would probably be the most boring channel because you would get one video per month. So 
probably not worth it, uh, but hey, we can maybe put it in here and if there's enough interest that we might do a dedicated channel. Okay, good. Uh, let's see, what is the minimum profit to close in percent? Not quite sure what you mean. I think that I've already answered um, your question here by going through this in more detail. Okay, um, Jordi says, uh, how is the Apple trade going? Has it come back into play yet? It has not as of this morning, but um, we can see what has Apple been doing uh, since the Fed here actually announced something and Apple has been jumping up today. Well, as you can see, there's a five minute chart here. So what we are looking at is a, is a five minute chart. Um, so this is where we open today right here. So this is the open. As you can see, Apple was going down for most of the day jumped up and like the Nasdaq pulled back a little bit. So Apple, I mean, for the day, this was yesterday's close right up here. So as you can see, Apple is still down for the day. So therefore nothing there just yet. Uh, but good question. So we will, we have to wait a few more days for Apple, but uh, it should be good, good, good. Okay. So uh, let's see, uh, Cheryl says, super helpful. I was holding to reach the 90% target, not considering the PPD. Again, PPD is uh, a little bit more involved and a little bit more complicated. And I'm actually considering incorporating this concept of the PPD into my trading. Right now, I've been doing it the lazy way, 90% of the profit. I mean, nothing wrong with this at all, at all. It says, can you think of Canadian traders? We need the hookups too. And I know, you know what? I know that I, I, I love Canadian traders. I love you. Trust me. Would love to give you a hookup. However, your government does not really like American brokerages. So, and this is a matter not of uh, American brokerages. It's really the rules and regulations of your government. And uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll find something for you. It might not be that easy though. Anyhow. Good, good, good. All right, Michael is asking, is the wheel book out due soon? Yes, it is. The wheel book will be available April 9th. That is the latest information that we received from the printer. So three weeks from now, probably next week, um, I will let you pre-order it if you want to. Um, so if you want to get on a list that I'll let you know when it is available, um, go to rockwelltrading.com slash wheelbook. Um, we'll post it here in the chat in the description uh, because this way uh, you can get it whenever it is available. And uh, what is already available is the PowerX strategy. So if you're interested in the PowerX strategy, which is another uh, strategy that you can use to take your account to the next level, uh, this is already available. I'll leave a link in the description. $4.95 on our website. If you buy it on Amazon, it's like $24 or something like this. Not quite sure but uh, I'll be happy to ship it to you for $4.95. Follow the link in the description and then uh, rockwelltrading.com slash wheelbook. You can put your name on a list and I'll let you know as soon as I have more information from the printer on when it will be available. Anyhow, so good talking to you. I hope that this topic was helpful for you. If it is, do me a favor and click on like. If you would like to know, have more information and videos like this, subscribe to the channel, hit the little notification bell because this way you get notified whenever I release a new video. And please do me a favor and share this video with as many people as you want or have in mind, uh, because I believe the more people who learn how to trade profitably, uh, the better we all will be off, right? I mean, wouldn't it be great if we all just make a lot of money? Aren't you so much happier when you have money versus not having money? I mean, they all say money can't buy you happiness, but I must say, I have money and I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'm happier than most folks that do not have money. Anyhow, that's the topic for another Coffee with Marcus. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.